Hey, Brian Stucker here again, certified personal trainer and baby boomer fitness expert where today we're going to do a question and answer for female fat loss over 50 and how perfect it is to have Rosie with me today who is a female over 50 who transformed her body, transformed her life to do the question and answer. Thank you for joining us today. And thank you for having me. It's a, it's a pleasure and an honor to be here, Brian. So thank you. Thank you. So, um, if you could read off the questions that we got through the email and private message, and then we'll go and I'll answer it, and then you can throw in your two cents of how you would transform yourself with these questions of fat loss for women over 50. Okay. The first question is, can you get rid of bat wings and go sleeveless at 50? And the question came from... Juanita. Juanita. Juanita, you absolutely can um, have fat loss over 50 and get your get rid of your bat wings and transform your arms over 50. I mean, look at Rosie's arms. Were your were your arms a little bit bat wings when you first started? Um if you saw my picture on the website, yeah, you can see that it's just pure flab and when I went like this everything went like this. So, but as you can see now, uh we need I've seen your arms lately. The bat wings are going away, but you've been working really hard and that's that there's no doubt that that's what you have to do. Absolutely. So um, basically, um, we'll get a picture for um, for uh, Jason here, and he will put this up in the screen so you, he can see your you, people here can see your arms oh, before and okay. after. And okay. I can't guarantee you you're going to have arms like Rosie because I can't guarantee you're going to do the work that Rosie's done. So, Juanita, how I would approach transforming arms, and I've used this through my whole 13 year career, and this is what I've seen transform. Uh, women's arms over 40, over 50, over 60, is that we need to use progressive overload resistance training on that. So uh, basically that all that means is that there's two areas that you need to work, which is your biceps and your triceps. Those are the two areas. You need to do exercises that are going to uh, stimulate muscle in those areas. And what I mean by progressive overload is week to week, you're going to have to challenge yourself with uh, a, a one more rep or a little bit more weight. And that's the first step. And then the other thing is, if your arms are a little bit wiggly, you gotta, you know, you can't all train a bad diet. You gotta reduce the body fat in that yes, area. And you're gonna absolutely. do, yeah, you're gonna do that by making sure you're consuming less than you're burning and you're eating high quality protein sources to repair the muscle from your workouts. And uh, then add in, resist add in some cardiovascular training a couple times a week to expand that calorie deficit and to burn that fat. And you too, Juanita, can have arms like Rosie. And you're not too far from it, let me tell you. I've seen your arms lately. Yeah, you submitted a picture mm -hmm. um, of your arms currently, mm -hmm. and I s have seen your arms transform over the last two years. Yes. So um, I might actually send that over to Jason also um, to post that with this. So you're on your track, and anybody yes. else who's watching this and wants to get rid of those uh, bat wings over 50, this is how you do it. So we'll go on to the next one. How can I transform my saggy butt? Hmm. It is possible. Is okay. Is it possible? Is it possible? Okay. And that one came from Jeanette. Jeanette. Okay. So we were at the bl little black dress party we had this last week, <laughs> and Rosie was kind enough to speak in front of the audience of what her transformation was. And one of her statements was, "Is and I never had a butt like this." Yes. So could you? True. So seeing that you went from saggy butt to never having a butt like this. How did you do it? Well, it really took someone honest to say that that's what my butt looked like, saggy butt. Hopefully it wasn't your husband. It was my husband. Uh-oh. <laughs> Guys. But I, was, I okay. was offended, but I am the type of person that if you tell me the truth, and if I see it, I'm going to do something about it. So when I saw it was really true, that's when I decided to take action. And um, you have to look at... Like I said, not look at the scale because, you know, fat is going to turn into muscle. And um, so how I did it was um, squat training, uh, doing some resistant training with the squat, some hamstring curls. Um, you know, you, you want to do a little bit of overloading if you're going to um, really build that muscle. I'm not kidding you. It's hard work, especially the larger muscle groups there. Um, 
also you know you want to make sure that you don't have injuries either so do if you're going to do some um, cardio like running and things like that sprinting um, make sure that you're careful with that yeah you know? Especially for age of fifty, you've got to be careful yes. with the uh, the weight loss, the um, the injury side of it. Like especially running and sprinting, running will transform those glutes and yes. lift the saggy mm -hmm. butt. Um, I would also say what you're talking about is you know you said it takes a lot of work. I would say if you're looking for an improvement, make a commitment, a six week commitment yes. to get a some consistency, a consistency, yeah, mm -hmm. for at least six weeks. And, mm -hmm. and do this. It's like, you know, there's this whole saying out there, right? You get rewarded in public what you do in private. So if you're looking for a compliment from somebody, um, those things usually don't happen for the first 12 weeks. So if you're looking for that external feedback where you're getting praise for not having a saggy butt or even to see it yourself, it's going to take 12 weeks. But you can notice in six weeks. So I would break it up into uh, two six weeks, six week goals of consistency. And I would do twice a week resistance training for those muscle groups and focus on one, say like on a Monday, and the other workout on a Thursday. So you have enough time to recover in between and enough overload so your body has to make those adaptations to bring up those areas. So uh, things like you said, squats. Uh, some deadlifts, modifications for squats and deadlifts, depending on where you are. And we're going to do some videos today to show different progressions for that. Um, uh, split squats, lunges, step ups, step ups, uh, glute yes. bridges mm -hmm. um, are all great exercise exercises to uh, build the booty. And one of my favorite combinations that actually some of my um, older, no, I don't want to say older, more mature, more mature. Uh, <laughs> physical. Com um, uh, physique competitors and and uh, bikini competitors is I like to do deadlifts and superset that with split squats, lunges or walking lunges because there you're doing an extended set and you're putting a lot of volume on those glutes. So uh, that's a good way to transform it also. And I think in one of my walking first lunges. yeah walking right. lunges. So mm -hmm. um, we'll demonstrate some of those too. So uh, Jeanette, you can absolutely erase the saggy butt yes. and. And uh, Rosie, if I can do it. You can do it. <laughs> and, how, and, and I don't mean to ask what your age is, but just for the people back home, what? How old are you? I'm 58. 58. Mm -hmm. 58. So, so Rosie, so what, it is possible. It is possible. All right. So I think we uh, we hit that one pretty good. But we're going to do another video of demonstrations and workouts you can do, um, beginner, immediate, and advanced to transform your booty after this. So we're going to go into the next question. And what is the best way to lose weight over 50? All right, best way to lose weight over 50. What have you found, Rosie, for yourself? You made quite the transformation. <clears throat> well, you definitely have to make a lifestyle change as far as your diet goes, and that is cutting out um, a bad carbs. Sugar is the number one. You know, sugar in your coffee, those hidden sugars, like in your yogurts, things like that. Um, um, if you're going to have any kind of sugar, you know, like in berries and fruits and things like that, good fruits that aren't too high in, um, in the sugar content. Um, also, portioning out your foods, um, making sure that your portions, like your proteins, uh, especially proteins, are balanced um, according to, you know, your activities that you need. I, I do a high-protein diet right now because of my muscle, muscle building and um, lots of vegetables make sure the vegetables are a lot of greens and plenty of water half your body weight in ounces water is really the key to flushing out the toxins and things like that if you do that um, change um, you will see a definite weight loss the weight loss will come start coming off of the the um, abdomen area and that's the problem area over 50 so i would say um, your diet has a lot to do with that. Okay. Yeah, I would say um, for losing any kind of weight, also you gotta you gotta play the long game. And what I mean by the long game is you gotta go at least to make a commit. Like you you said a lot of great points. Your lifestyle change yeah, is, is you've got to take that change. twenty four, uh, twelve to twenty four weeks. I mean, especially if it's 30 pounds or 40 pounds, because you're learning a lot of new habits. Like, you're learning, okay, I'm in a calorie deficit. What proteins to eat? What carbs to eat? Mm -hmm. What fats? You gave some great examples of what foods to eat. So play the long game 
and you're gonna lose a lot of weight in the beginning. And probably some people lose four pounds, some people lose six pounds, but over time, it starts to stall out. It starts mm -hmm. to stall out. And then you begin to lose one to two pounds a week and people are like, man, I put so much effort in. I mean, I did five workouts this week with my weights. I did four weeks of workouts with my cardio and I watched my food and I only lost two pounds. Mm -hmm. And that's when I said, awesome. And people are like, what do you mean awesome? And once you can adopt the mindset, like this is that lifestyle mm -hmm. and this is something I love to do for me and you've got the long game and you have in perspective and you get that down, that is when you're gonna truly have adopted the other principles that Rosie's talking about. And uh, that's the best way I would say to lose weight over 50 because at, at what I find people at 50 versus the th people in their 30s is they're trying to look a certain way, right? People over 50, they wanna look a certain way, but they wanna look a certain way and they have other benefits. They want to travel. I mean, I had a lady the other day say she can't get on a plane to go to Australia because mm. she's not fit enough to travel. And that's never crossed my mind. But those are things people want to do over 50 and why they want to lose weight. So um, there's those other benefits that you want. Play with the grandchildren, being around longer, having better blood sugar so you don't have type 2 diabetes, um, you know, having more muscle because you've lost so much of that from your 30s, 40s, and 50s. So, yeah, love Rosie's points there, and those are the only ones that I would really add on to that. All right. Okay. Um, I'm working out but not losing weight. What do I need to change? That was, that's so good that this question mm -hmm. came up because I know you've experienced this yourself and you yes. had a wonderful answer at the Little Black Dress Party about that. Would you like to share that story? Um, well, um, in the beginning when I first started Boomer two, two and a half years ago, you know, I did the four week um, trial. And I um, stepped on the scale at the end of that trial and saw that I had gained four plus pounds. And I was just um, very, very upset with myself. And I didn't feel that I found the results, even though I exercised, you know, continuously throughout the, um, you know, that four weeks. So, um, but I wasn't being honest with myself. I was snacking things like that. Just those little things add up to calories. Um, eating late at night, uh, you know, finishing up someone else, you know, your little kid's food, oh, you know, just two, two fries, you know. <laughs> things like that add up and you don't know, you grab a, you know, sugary drink, you know. So sugar, I believe, has a lot to do with it and carbs. So you have to really watch those and it is really hard to, to to not, uh, um, you know, you, to avoid those when you have a family, but those are the things you just got to make yourself aware of, is, uh, is consciously, consciously um, eating the right way and not mindless eating. So, yeah. yeah. You, you know, you hit on the head there. It's like you, you can train all day long, which you did yes. for four weeks, mm -hmm. and you can't yeah. all train a bad diet. You no. can't all train a bad diet. So, um, you know, you're working out, but I'm not losing any weight. My, I'm going to take this to an advanced level, which I've had some candid conversations over the years with people, is I have to ask them the question, is there secondary gain for not losing the weight? And what do I mean by secondary gain is sometimes people work out, but like you said, they have these other foods they like to eat. And because... Um, they get a secondary gain, emotional gain from mm -hmm. eating those foods. So, like, That's so, a good so, point. so, example: somebody comes in and they say, "I made all my workouts. I haven't lost any weight." And then, what ends up happening is, I look at their food diary, and they had ice cream every single night, five nights in a row of ice cream. And then you add up the calories, and they're like, they're overshooting their calories, and they're actually gaining weight now. And they're doing an exercise plan. They thought exercise was going to help them. And then I ask them, you know. I call them out on it. You know, why are you eating the ice cream? And that, I'm not that ice cream is bad, but your goal is weight loss. Mm -hmm. And you told me yeah, why you want to achieve it. And you're yeah. excited. And you're you're pounding the desk and mm -hmm. ready to stay on top of like why you're committed this time. And then I will say, you know, what does ice cream give you? And for some people, it gives them certainty. It gives them comfort. They associate their identity to that. That it's my favorite food. And um, so what is that secondary gain emotionally that you're gaining from 
eating some food. So dealing with emotional secondary gain, and that could be you know uh, mindless snacking. It could be your favorite food that you're eating. Um, find, start finding those emotions of why you're eating. Um, you know maybe you're being hard on yourself. You look in the mirror and you're telling yourself you look horrible, and then you go to all your friends and you cry to them a story on why you can't lose weight. And you know, I ask people all the time, is it okay if I'm honest with you or do you want me to be like everybody else? Because if I'm honest with you, you're gonna achieve phenomenal results, but if I'm like everybody else, I'm gonna tell you what you wanna hear, then you can, you're can you not gonna get the results and you're gonna go on about your life, but you're not gonna be happy and you can blame it on the, this program that doesn't work, but they didn't make that true honest, like you yes. said, honesty with it, themselves. It's gonna set you free if you're very honest with yourself. I mean, even that drink, that weekend drink and the margarita with the chips. Oh, you know, um, I didn't do this all week, so I'm gonna huh. do this, you know. Alcohol and you combine it with a mixed um, ingredient is a lot of sugar. And I used to do that. I said I worked out for, you know, a week and I deserve this a couple of glasses of wine. Well, that kind of sabotaged, especially um, being a little bit older, your metabolism is slower. Um, That really sabotaged. And I wasn't willing to admit that yet, but I finally did. And I had to cut that out because I wanted to lose that weight that badly. What did, what did that, yeah, that's a great point. What did that mean to you when you finally made that distinction? Like, I'm going to enjoy a couple glasses of wine. And then what was it that pushed you over the edge when you finally said to yourself, enough's enough. I'm, I'm not going to lie to myself anymore. This is what I have to give up to get to the next level. What was that for you? Well, you know, I didn't feel good either when I was doing it. Um, I was really, really lying to myself and kidding myself when I said that I could have a few, Mm you know. And then it makes it all right. But it's not all right because the question is, I'm not losing any weight. I still look... um, I still have this um, big roll of fat here, and I'm sick and tired of it. I, I hate it. So you have to get to that point that you want to change that. Yeah. And, and that's what it did for me. I really hit bottom with it. And when I um, decided to really get serious and stop what I was doing, that's when the weight came off. And I, I guarantee if you decide to, to change those habits, um, you will lose weight. I think you hit it on the head there. Mm-hmm. It's like uh, I went to a Tony Robbins seminar one time, and he says people want to change one or two things, how they feel or behavior. And when it comes to losing weight, you've got to have three things. Believing I can change, um, I will change, and I can change, or I must change and I will change. So you hit rock bottom, like I must change, Mm -hmm. I can change, I will change. So you hit those three points right there. So Liz, hang in there. You can't all train a bad Mm -hmm. diet. Identify those emotions that may be holding you back. Look at those rationalizations you're telling yourself and uh, follow the nutrition guide that we've got for you. Uh, We've talked to a couple ladies here that said, you know, sometimes they weren't able to get all their workouts in, but when they just followed the meal plan, like one lady at our challenge said she only got 16 workouts in, but she followed the weight loss plan, the the nutrition plan, and she lost a ton of weight. So Mm -hmm. it starts with the foundation of nutrition, then your weights, then your cardio, healthy mindset, and then supplements. And you're not alone. There are people here to help you and support you. Absolutely. We're here to help. All right. And how do you deal with cravings? Tell me. You know what? Uh, uh, This is a pet peeve of mine through my whole career because I always get that from people like, I crave this, I crave that, I crave this. Well, everybody has cravings. Mm -hmm. So what separates a Rosie who has cravings, a Brian who has cravings from the person who has cravings who's not achieving the results they want? So... I personally say, I don't want to say this too mean, but you got to suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> That's a good one. Right? When, it's true. Mm-hmm. So there's one way. Suck it up, buttercup, because we all have um, cravings. Mm-hmm. But the second thing, too, let's look at pragmatically, too, other than just sucking it up, is like, is your calorie deficit too low? 
Like, are you eating 800 calories a day? Let's get your calories up to 1,200 calories a day. What kind of calories are you taking in? Are you eating, you know, three Snickers bars? I'm just throwing yes. Snickers out there. Or eating Sugar. a bag of chips mm -hmm. or drinking a bottle of wine. And those are calories that are not going to make you feel full or give you satiety. Um, they increase your cravings, yeah, actually. Yeah, because your body... increasing your insulin, causing you to want more. Yes, yeah, so your You're body, never, yeah. Feeling hung, you're never feeling satisfied. You gotta have more and more and more. So cutting down on that sugar is gonna cut that um, those cravings and also drink water if you have that craving. Mm -hmm. Drink water. Just go. Oh, I have that craving. Glug glug glug. <laughs> and then you know you'll feel better about yourself. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know what's funny is yeah. And eat more nutrient-dense foods. So cut those sugary foods out, those simple sh sh foods that absorb very quickly. Eat more nutrient-dense foods, your quality protein yeah, sources. Proteins. Your, you know, vegetables with a lot of fiber is going to help you feel full. And, and good quality fats. Fats are going to help you give you satiety also. And then drinking that water. That's, that's perfectly there. That's how you deal with cravings uh, on a pragmatic level. And then, and then sucking it up, buttercup. Mm -hmm. yes. All right. Is it really as easy as calories in and calories out to lose weight, Megan? Well, is it as easy as just calories in, calories out? Um, well, it depends on um, certain what you're eating, yeah. you know, calorie-wise, the quality of the calories. Are they, is it a balanced meal, you know, as far as your... Um, um, Proteins, carbohydrates, and, uh, you know, things like that. So um, you don't want to ever go in a deficit so that you are, um, your body goes into a starvation mode, you know, and starts using, you know, um, uh, doesn't start burning fat. So it, it really depends on, on your activity level, too, I believe. Yeah. Um as for calories in, calories out, you will lose weight, calories in, calories out, but what kind of weight, and this is where I take it a next step mm -hmm. further, is I'm, you know, I want you to lose weight, but I want you to be healthy. So I talk about, you know, you want to have a calorie deficit to lose weight, yeah. but then we start taking a look at the foods, because you, you will lose weight. And the reason why I say look at your foods, because you want sustained energy to fuel your workouts. Yes. You want good protein to help you recover from your workouts, uh, to maintain lean body mass. Because, like, I could eat 1,200 calories from donuts, and what's going to happen is I'm going to be super hungry. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to lose lean body mass. Or I could eat 1,200 calories of a mixture of chicken breast, lean turkey, or some vegan source or vegetarian source, uh, tofu. Or, um, or I could eat like some st uh, complex starches like sweet potatoes, brown rice, and then some good fats like some avocados or um, you know almonds or olive oil. And those are fuels that are gonna help me build lean muscle, give me sustained mm -hmm. energy, and help me lose weight versus just eating you know 1,200 calories and Twinkies. Yeah, empty, and empty calories. Empty calories, mm -hmm. and one person's gonna have more sustained energy, feel better, have better health, Still gonna lose, and versus the other person's gonna have better health, sustain energy, versus uh, just you're both gonna lose weight, but one person's gonna be healthier. Yes, and yeah. they're gonna have much more muscle mass mm -hmm. than the other with you know adequate protein intake. So, you know, you gotta look at your diet. There's so many different um, things that you could look at, um, menus and things like that to get the right balance. Okay, so awesome. Mm -hmm. Uh, what are your thoughts about cleanses to lose weight? To lose weight. A little typing error there. Oh, okay. What are your thoughts about cleanses to lose weight? Okay, Ashley. All right. So my, <laughs> I laugh at this one because we're in the big like lose weight cleanses, magical diets, magical mm -hmm. pills age, and a lot of times when people come to me, I say, why do you want to? Why do you want to cleanse? Well, it's an easy way to lose weight. It's going to help me lose a lot of weight quickly. So. Usually what happens when somebody has a cleanse, yeah, you're going to lose a lot of weight. But what happens is you're losing water, you're losing glycogen, mm -hmm. and you're losing muscle. And usually a lot of times when people go off these cleanses 7 to 10 days, 
Um, they all, the they, yeah, they end up losing, uh, they, when they go back off of these cleanses, they gain all the way back, if not more. They do. And they have worse metabolism. I'm one of them. Yeah. <laughs> I've experienced it before. Yeah, so those yeah. are my thoughts of cleanses. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you, you want to add in some healthier foods, good multivitamins, good nutrition there, uh, get your, your quality micronutrients, um, and then... Uh, you'll lose your weight that way and cleanse your body by eating healthier foods and adding foods that cleanse and keeping that calorie deficit. I'll let you talk about okay. it, seeing that you've personally um, experienced it. I have um, exper uh, have done it through like herbal teas and things like that, and but you know it really doesn't work because afterwards you're so hungry that you will you end up blowing that that cleanse anyway. Um, and you're so um, depleted, you know. Can't really think depleted. either. Depleted. So what I would suggest is uh, doing a time frame of a cleanse, but the cleanse is mostly like vegetables, um, some proteins, no, no sugars or starches for a while, and make that maybe three weeks or four weeks. And um, lots of water in between, eliminate um, some of the nuts and avocados, and just cleanse so that your body, your body adjusts to learning to eat healthy and chewing the food. There you, you go. Know? So, you know, um, my mentor says you have teeth, so chew. <laughs> you know, green salads, you know, lots of water, put lemon in your water. And do that for at least three to four weeks. If you want to see me about that, I do have a great um, meal plan that is a, like a cleansing. And you will see the weight drop without a feeling deprived or starved. And that's a cleansing type of, of uh, meal plan. Yeah, send that over, and then I will send that okay. out with this video. Mm -hmm. I will send that out to our people mm -hmm. so that they get the meal plan with the video. Great. And then our, uh, our last one. Okay. Can I still have my dessert and lose weight? Where'd that one come from? Veronica. All right, Veronica. Mm -hmm. Well, my answer to that is absolutely. Um, here's the deal. I look at it as that's part of the long-term approach. Okay. Is you got to treat yourself. Yes. And you treat absolutely. yourself kindly by eating good quality food, getting your workouts in, and then every once in a while, splurging. My favorite is uh, Ben & Jerry's. Uh, Personally, I like to eat desserts, and mine's Ben and & Jerry's, and I eat the whole little pint. It's like this big, and it's uh, made from almond milk, and it's the peanut butter and cookie one that I enjoy, and I'll eat the whole thing. But what I do to prepare myself for that is I will have 12, uh, 12 to 21 days of quality eating and quality workouts. Because uh, what's happening is if I'm losing body fat, I'm depleting my body of uh, fat, I'm losing body fat, and I use it as a way to re-stimulate my metabolism. I'll eat that whole mm -hmm. thing, and I'll trick my body into thinking, okay, we're not starving, the calories are up a little bit, the next day when I work out, um, I'm more mentally in tune. I have more energy to work out. I don't know if that's, a, uh, I'm a little angry with myself that I had it, <laughs> but I go for it. Or if I go visit my mom and dad in Wisconsin, I'll go back home. My mom cooks some favorite foods that I, I cook, uh, that she cooks. Uh, my dad and I will go to a Packer game. I'll have a brat with some cheese. Uh, that's what Wisconsin people do. But uh, what I do to prepare myself for that is I go, I'm going home in a month. I will train right and eat right for a month and when I go home I know that's going to happen and I'm willing to give back a week of that month because I know I'm going to eat a certain way over those three days when I visit mom and dad. So, And then I pick my ones that I like to eat. I don't eat the whole pan of seven layer bars when my sister makes them. I cut out one seven layer bar, a nice chunk, and then I mindfully eat through that. So uh, I would say pick your shot. Train smart, eat right, like we've been talking about, and then pick your shot where you're going to have your dessert, your meal, your thing you're going to have, and mindfully eat it, mindfully enjoy it. And know you're going to take a little back, and it's part of life. You're a human being, yes. not a machine right. um, that's supposed to do uh, something. One of my good friends, Charmaine Ironside, if she's watching this, good for you. Um, I, I love what you're doing. She has the diet dropout. She did show after show after show. But she hated herself the most at those shows because she was depriving her body for so much and getting on stage to be judged in something that 
it's you can't really quantify. So she found mindful eating all the way through while training, and then every once in a while or having a dessert. So dropping out the diet. And I, I got the there's a joke out there. It's my last one. I'll let you take. Go ahead. No. Go there's, right ahead. There's it's a joke enough. out there where there's Homer Simpson. <laughs> uh, Homer Simpson. He uh, he goes up to this this uh, this bush, and the first three letters are die and he's like oh and then he pulls it the rest of the way and it's and then the t's there it's diet oh. so like the first three letters of die it is die so um, it's a good visual yeah so Think make sure it. that uh mm -hmm. you're not killing yourself that this is a long-term sustainable health role so that's that's my take on yes you can have your dessert and still lose lose weight um that's why they have the cheat meal you know, um, I think that's really important, especially after a long, hard, uh, hard week of um, committed exercise and your diet. But that's not a cheat day. It's a cheat meal. So you can have that um, dessert that you really like. I know for me, I'm not a sweet a tooth fan or ice cream fan, so I, I, but I do have my favorite vegetable chips. And there, it's a lot of carbs in that. And um, but I'm a crunchy type of person, so that's my. I make sure that I have that when I have that portion. I have really, um, really worked out um, to a point where um, I don't overload on my carbs that day. And I'm knowing that that's what I'm going to be able to have. And I, I. Um, I mean, look, look at, at those it. arms. If she's I eating those stuff it, like that, know. you can see those yeah. guns there. And, and pretty soon, you just burn it off. You burn it off the next day and you go, um, you move on. But let me tell you, when you have that dessert, it's not mindless eating. It becomes this delicious thing you're eating. And you could taste every flavor that comes from it because you're appreciating it as a, uh, a food, not something um, to satisfy you anymore just because you're bored, but you're actually savoring it it becomes like that when you get into that kind of lifestyle so that that dessert actually um, is something that um, really makes you feel happy about what you're doing and um, your lifestyle so that's how I look at having those desserts you know you don't have them every single day you know but you have a day specifically it could be like your rest day, you know, when you're resting and in between workouts. It could be that, that um, at dinner time, after dinner, or the evening when you have time to really relax and enjoy it. So make it an enjoyable ritual, ritual you know, because you worked out hard, so you deserve something like that. You know, that chocolate, that really good chocolate, perhaps, you know, or something like that. So... Um, yeah, and you just work out the, the really hard the next week. It's yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, thank, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank everybody for all your questions that you've submitted. Um, I, we answered the, a couple of them last week in our Over 50 for Men. Uh, keep them coming. Keep those coming in because we love answering them for you. We've got a ton of people that we've been working with down here at Boomer Fitness, and we absolutely love to answer them for you. Uh, nothing makes me more happy than the couple emails that I've been getting in from Florida and Iowa and New York from people that have had questions in this community is building. And it's so exciting to see all the lives that are transformed um, to, from the stories that I get of people who don't know how to work out, don't know where they're at, maybe lost a little bit in life and can't get themselves out of bed. And now they found this, this community where they're getting the workouts, they're eating right, they're finding that love, that excitement inside them again, and it's transforming their lives. So that's what we're here to do. So send your questions, send your emails. Yes. We're more than happy to answer them. And most importantly, take what we tell you and take action on it because action is the cure-all and will alleviate all your anxiety when it comes to transforming your body over the age of 50 and your health. Any last things you want to say? Yes, um, you can always ask me any questions at all because I've been through exactly what you've been through. Every single question I've been through. And um, so I could give you some hints, um, some uh, meal planning um not really secrets of mine, but the things that have worked for me, and I know they're going to work for you. So, like I said, we're a family, and um, we're here to help each other. 
So absolutely. So that was this was great. Thanks, Rosie, yeah. for stopping oh, by. My pleasure, brother. Can we have you back sometime? Of course. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We get the more questions like this. Yes. We're gonna take it out on the workout floor. So make sure you tune in for our next video um, where we're gonna be talking about how to transform your arms like Rosie's, uh, like Juanita's question there, and how to lift your butt. That's another video we're gonna do, and how to transform your legs. So uh, those are all things we're gonna talk about here in a little bit. But uh, thank you again for stopping by. You and guys have we, a great are day. Are we going out that way? Or yeah. Are we going out that way? <laughs> I think we'll go out that way. There we go. <laughs> All right. You guys have a great day. I would love to hear what you liked best about this video. So down below, you'll see a comment section. Just leave your comments, and I want to thank you so much for the comments you've been leaving me over the months, and I've been getting back to filling those out. Also down below in the description box, you'll see a link, and in that description box with that link, you want to click it, and it's going to take you to another page where you're going to get four free workouts. To get those four, four free workouts, you just have to enter your email address. So go down below, click the link, and we're going to get you those, those workouts right away by entering email address. Also, down below, make sure you click the subscribe button so you get updated when we release all this great content. So thank you again for tuning in. Thank you so much for your comments. Go get your free workouts, and you guys make it a great day.